Monday's a very unconventional day for such a thing. That's right. People normally at work on a Monday. The Golem! Yes, yes! Gargoyles! Trolls! And mysteries. On a it's Monday. a mystery Monday. That was one of the weirdest, yeah. if not the weirdest. Uh, <laughs> I, think, I, think, I think that was the weirdest. Yeah, one, definitely. Yeah, I think so. But you that know, was ominous. Uh, one could say it was the most mysterious mm. intro we've had so far. Definitely wasn't the best one, <laughs> but it was. <laughs> I don't know. I really enjoyed that one. That was one of my faves. I mean, it was part. definitely quite weird and demented, which is what we're. Which is one of the things that we relish in. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't as catchy as some of the others. No, no. But I mean, yeah, it was quite like an eerie little chord mm. sequence, wasn't it? <laughs> very fast, very Phantom of the Opera. Mm. Christine, <laughs> Christine, <laughs> Christine. <laughs> Great, I think Phantom of the Opera. By the way, never seen it. Mate, it's mm. really good, really good. Mm. The thought that there's just some weird, disfigured, freaky phantom bloke just like living in under in like an underground layer mm. under this theatre, yeah. but he's like this dope singer and like um and like can just make these just you know and dope composer, and then just like it's pretty freaky that he just becomes obsessed with freaky this woman called Christine, Christine, and then like abducts her and that. It's mm. pretty sketchy, but it's also like just quite cool. Yeah, mm. and he just wears this creepy mask, and you don't really like know what's underneath. Mm. And then there's this bit where she rips <laughs> off the mask because she wants to see what he looks like, and then it's like, it's like pretty freaking. Because the mask perfect. only covers like half of his face, isn't it? Yes, it's but like the bit underneath half. is like really yeah. disfigured. Yeah. Mm. It's oh. pretty f- and then when, yeah, he, he gets like full on triggered when she pulls it off. <coughs> and then it's like, but obviously it's like it's like a musical, so they use musical all the way through, and they use music like brilliantly. Mm. Mm. So when she pulls it off, not only is he like triggered, but the music's like, <gasps> like <gasps> yeah, like fat <laughs> organ playing. Do you know what I mean like? <laughs> Oh yeah, that one. Yeah, yeah. I know that one. <laughs> but yeah, I'm sort of digressing quite a lot. Welcome to Mystery Mondays, everybody. What's it's up, time to tell you a tale. It's Bullwinkle's turn this week to tell us a mysterious tale. That's right. 
Um, we will find out all about it. Mm. And I'm very much looking forward to it. What will it be? What will it be? You what tell me, Borrowinkle. You tell me. Should we get I almost, mm. I almost wish I had a mystery that was as scary as our intro ah. this week. I don't know if this is as terrifying. Is it like quite like a, not a particularly freaky tale then? No. Uh, you'll see. As we get into it, you'll see. You'll see. That's all I can really say. Nice. Yeah. I don't really know how to preface Ooh. it without sort of getting into the Ooh. intro. Ooh. There's some music in the background, yeah? You oh like my. it, yeah? Oh, God. Oh, freaky dinky. Oh, no. <laughs> 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 oh. oh, me noosh. Oh, God. Oh, me noosh. Oh, me noosh. Evil one. Not to be confused with moose boosh. <laughs> Which is, which is which is which is diet related, mm. food related. Is it? Yeah, an amuse bouche. It's like a small small amount of food or something. Amuse bouche. Yeah, and an amuse bouche. Mm. Yeah, bouche. Like a small amount of food. Mm. A bit like an appetizer, but it's not an appetizer. Ap- yeah, it's an, it's an amuse bouche. Yeah, I've never heard of that. I will tell you what, we'll talk about amuse bouches on the next Pandora's <laughs> box in a bit more detail because I think we should probably get on with the mystery. Should we get on with the mystery? Should we get on with the mystery? Bullwinkle. It's over to you, lad. Here we go. Right. So, this is the tale of the curious case of Caspar Hauser. On May 26th, 1828, a teenager was found wandering a public square in what is now Nuremberg, Germany. Ah, the Nuremberg Ring. Is this the time-travelling dude? No. Oh. <laughs> is the Nuremberg Ring uh, where the where the Nuremberg? Yeah. Mm. The, is that the same place? I Germany. So. Germany. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. In yeah, Germany. You go for a drive in your you car. You go for a drive. Yes. Right yes. The Nuremberg Ring. Very fast. Vroom very, vroom very, like James very Bond. Very fast. Yes. <laughs> Aston Martin. Yes. He wore tattered clothing and clutched an envelope containing two letters. The first was addressed to the captain of a local cavalry regiment asking him to take the young lad into his charge, apparently written uh, by an anonymous poor labourer who found and raised the abandoned boy, but who could no longer keep him. A second letter, dated 1812 and unsigned, was apparently written by his mother, um, stated that the boy's father was no longer alive, that she could not take care of him, and that he was being sent to join the military. The boy about 16 or 17, seemed confused and appeared unable to read or write other than his name, Caspar Hauser. When asked about his life, at first he could only say that he didn't know who he was other than his name Hmm. or where he had come from. (laughs) (laughs) Hauser acted strangely, for example, preferring bread and water to meats and vegetables and having no civilized manners. Uh, But within several weeks, much to the astonishment of everyone, he apparently learned to read and write. The following year, capitalising on his newfound fame, his autobiography was published in which he claimed to have spent his entire life in a small, dark room, sleeping on straw and fed by unseen strangers. Mm. So I haven't written writ some of this down, but he also was like talking about how apparently he would just like wake up and there would be like rye bread and water next to him. Oh, that's why he was into the water and rye ah, bread. Exactly, then. and like familiarity. Mm. And sometimes like uh, the water would clearly be like doused or, or spiked with something, and then he would like go to sleep for longer, and he'd wake up and his like nails would have been cut, and he'd have had like a haircut and stuff. Mm. Almost like they were like taking care of him, but so in this weird, dark, like two meter wide room. They were like hiding him from the rest of the world, but they were also weirdly taking care of him, mm. weren't they? You know, a wee bit strange if you mm. ask me. Quite strange that no one knew who this child was either. Mm. So that's an important thing to know. I already have a theory, but uh, I'll let you go on the tale. Cool. Hauser became famous with hundreds of books, magazine articles, films, and even plays written about him. Many people have tried to theorise who he actually was. The newspapers on both sides of the ocean were even full of him. Uh, One thing that added intrigue and tragedy to an already baffling case was was that there were apparently several attempts on his life the last one coming five years after his discovery, when, where he was fatally stabbed in 1833. Do we so, know who stabbed him? No. Mm. No, we do not. 
spoil it but, uh, all. We, the, we do have an idea, and I'll get into that later. Okay. Um, so, theories about Caspar Hauser. So who was this mysterious boy? Some people believe that Hauser was an undiagnosed epileptic and, and that some of his claims and visions may have been medical in origin. Mm. Others believe that the poor boy must have been delusional and driven mad by the neglect and abuse he suffered for much of his life, assuming, of course, that his story of abuse was in fact true. One widely repeated conspiracy theory holds that Hauser was actually the rightful heir to a royal th- throne, secreted away mm. for some nefarious reason. After all, many said, why would the boy have been so mistreated and why would several assassins try to kill a teenage boy if his existence wasn't a threat to someone powerful? Royalty. Mm. Through popular, though popular, this idea was widely discredited by scholars as unlikely. The gothic idea that a mysterious person of unknown origin may really be through the machinations of a powerful conspiracy the rightful heir to royalty yeah. was certainly not unique to Hauser. That's what I was thinking. Mm. It's like the man in the iron mask. Mm. Mm. In fact, there were many stories and rumours where were popular in the first half of the 19th century. Uh, Alexander Dumas even famously used that plot device in his book, The Man in the Iron hey! Mask, in the mid-1800s. Look at that. Cooled what I was going to say before I even said it. Um, so, the real... <laughs> The real Caspar Hauser. <laughs> <laughs> theories yeah. about Caspar Hauser's true identity are like theories about Jack the Ripper's true identity. One proponent's argument seems very convincing until you read another author's contradictory argument, which seems just as plausible. With so little verifiable information and so many rumours asserted as proven fact, it's likely that we will never know the real truth. There is one fact that is fairly well established about Caspar Hauser, though, that he was a liar. Over and over, Mm -hmm. a variety of sources agree that Hauser was prone to repeatedly exaggerate and tell 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 tells. Um, It is clear that Hauser lied about his upbringing, upbringing, where he claimed he had spent his entire life alone as a prisoner in a small room without light. (sighs) If this were true, he would have both been (laughs) he would have been far more debilitated both mentally and physically. He looked a bit chubby. Mm. Yeah. That's not what you expect from a lifelong prisoner. Look at that little chubby face. From the boy living (laughs) on water and... I mean, that's not a face of someone that lives (laughs) off water and rye bread. That's too much bread, that is. That's the face of someone that indulges in a lot of cheese and crackers. That is. Port. He looks like he should be called Munchausen. (laughs) (laughs) General Munchausen. (laughs) The heir to a cheese company. Yes. Yes. Munchausen. The unsolved mystery of the lost prince, as I say. Anyway. The lost prince of cheese. (laughs) The lost prince of cheese. Yes, yes. Um, If nothing else, he would have certainly uh, suffered from rickets, a bone softening disease that results from lack of vitamin D, Mm. which the body produces naturally through exposure to sunlight. There is no mention in the records of Hauser having deformed bones, however. There were other problems with his story too. For example, at least one of his letters he had when he was found was a crude forgery and could not have been written when it was claimed. This is because the man who, to whom the letter was addressed, an army captain, was not in Nuremberg in 1812 when the letter was written, but he was there when it and Hauser first appeared a decade later in 1828. Mm. <laughs> At the time, many suspected that Hauser faked the attacks and attempted assassinations on himself. This is hardly a thing of the past. Even today, people sometimes fake assaults, abductions, and even their own deaths. Some people who have a disease called Munchausen's syndrome... (laughs) General Munchausen! He is a Munchausen! He is General Munchausen! How weird is that? That's literally what it's called. That was premonit- you had a premonition, Drew. That's weird. We both had premonitions. Yeah. Yeah. The man in the iron Munchausen. It is quite mysterious. (laughs) Yeah. Mysterious Mondays after. Whoa, Mystery Mondays is getting extra mysterious Mm. up in here. Um, So some people that have this syndrome intentionally injure themselves for sympathy and attention. Yeah. Nor is it unheard of for people to sometimes fake having grown up, abandoned, or even raised by animals. Caspar Hauser claimed he was attacked on three different occasions. Once in October 1829, when he was alone in a cellar, when an assailant no one else saw and that he could not describe, 
inflicted a superficial cut to his forehead. Once he was alone in a room when an unseen <laughs> assailant, no one else saw him, uh, and that he could not describe, shot him. Mm. So both these people, no one else saw this guy. No what? one else saw these people that like- Well, but he was injured. Yes, so both times he, he had a cut on his forehead and then he did get shot. Although he later admit that he did actually shoot himself. Mate, you gotta be mental to shoot yourself. Mm. Yeah. I remember though, things like that do happen. I used to even know somebody, um, that like went through a stage of claiming that they kept getting jumped on their way home, on their mm. way home from town. Mm. Mm. Um, I'll tell you guys who it is off air. Mm. You won't even know who he is, but mm. Drew will know who he is. Mm. Um, and then, um, it t- and, but like, it got weirder and weirder every time. And like the injuries, although sure. they were like real injuries, they didn't really seem like the sort of injuries of, that if you got beaten up. Mm. Yeah. And then like someone, um, Someone like caught him one night, like late at night, like when he was like walking home, like cutting himself with glass. Oh, that's and it was like an attention seeking thing. Like he wanted to come, oh. come down and like you know to the friendship group the next day and be like, oh, I got jumped again the night before. And it was like this weird thing. It was almost like he was building up this mystery, like who keeps jumping him. <laughs> mm. Yeah. And but it just got weirder and weirder. And after the first couple of times, I don't think anyone really believed it, but he kept it up. And then I think after a while, like. Got caught out. I can't remember if anybody confronted him about it, but obviously I think I think they probably somebody probably did, but like gently, if you know what I mean. Mm. And mm. I think he was probably so embarrassed he just like never mentioned it again, and nobody mm. else really brought it up again. Mm. He could have had Munchausen's. Syndrome. Maybe, maybe. Oh, uh, when I was younger, I um, accidentally sat. I was sat sitting in the swing at the at the top of the garden um, mm. as a young laddie when I was living up north, mm. and I had a BB gun. Mm. And like I stupidly, <laughs> I like I like loaded the BB gun, took the clip out, and then like looked just looked straight into oh. the barrel and just shot myself right in the eye. Shot. And to this day, my right eye is blurrier than my left eye, like way blurrier. You do have to wear glasses as well, don't you? Uh, yeah, and um, and also the colour is less contrasty in my right eye than it is in my well, left man, eye. Well, man, I can see colours well. popping more. Man, but, yeah, I literally I shot myself directly in the eye, and it it was the worst pain. I, oh, it's horrible. It's obviously like when you think about it in hindsight, it's like well, you loaded it, so the bullet had obviously gone yeah. into the cu- gun, I, not into I the, the clip and you were a little kid, just yeah. being stupid. And I took the clip out, and I was like, oh yeah, this is why kids the call from the void, man. The call this, from the void, yeah. Like, yeah, that was it. This is why kids obviously should not be allowed around weapons. No, yeah, not even BB guns because mm. they're quite powerful as well. Shoot like, yourself they, point blank in the eye. Yeah, that's about as much damage as you can do to yourself with a BB. Gun. Eye with that man. Yeah. yeah, that's brutal. Yeah, I that reckon if brutal. it was like a better BB gun, it was one of these like ones that were like quite a cheapo one. Mm. You know, it's still like a Beretta or something, but it wasn't like oh, a man, really powerful dude. one. Yeah, lucky man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. damn. Um, so getting back to the story, uh, finally in December 1833, when he mm. was alone in public gardens, an assailant whom no one else saw and that he could not describe stabbed him in the stomach. Hmm. I think this is when he died. Too. So he did actually get stabbed by an assailant. Or wow! Well, do you reckon he stabbed himself by an assailant? Yeah. Mate, this guy like sounds nuts. Mm. I reckon this guy was just a full-on psychopath. Mm. Mm. Uh, Hauser's death is widely seen as suspicious, and his claims of being attacked is contradicted by several pieces of damning evidence, including what was and what wasn't found at the scene of the attack. Mm. At Hauser's direction. After the attack, a small purse was found with a note that he claimed his attacker gave to him that amazingly mentioned the assailant's hometown. Mm -hmm. Uh, Why an assassin would intentionally give his victim a handwritten note that would later be discovered and partially identify him uh, stains his, you know, Mm. the the reality of this. Mm. Um, Even more damning for Hauser's tale, uh, is what wasn't found in the gardens when he said he was attacked. A second set of footprints in the snow. It mm. is widely believed that Hauser stabbed himself, probably for attention, and had sim- simply injured himself more grievously, more grievously than he had intended. Mm. So he like actually killed himself Mate, with that. Well, what do you expect if you start shooting and stabbing yourself all the time? Mm-hmm. It's what do you expect? It's not going to end pretty. Which is not. It's not like a paper cut, is it? Mm. 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 Uh, since it's clear that Hauser told Idiot. lies <laughs> and that told <laughs> lies about both Idiot. the beginning and ending of his life, there seems little reason to credit anything he said about his life as truth. Mm. The best evidence is that mu- much of the mystery about Kasper Hauser was manufactured by Hauser himself. 
Either as a hoax or because he suffered from a mental illness, we may never know his motives. But we do know that being famous to him was very important. Mm. As he eagerly Attention sought... Attention seeker. Exactly. Mm. But like to mad degrees, like mm. willing to go to any length, even shooting and himself. And like succeeded as well. Yeah. Um, as he eagerly sought and enjoyed his international no- notoriety, whether con artist or genuine mystery, in the end, Hauser won. Mm. His true nature and identity mm. is still debated and discussed today, nearly two centuries after his birth. But they've built like full like statues of him in places. What? And, yeah, like here's like a statue of him. Mate, really I don't think like that him, anybody but. should have bothered making a statue. <laughs> Can you <laughs> click on one of those? There's obviously a movie made about him. <laughs> Can you click on one? No, like the one to the one to the yeah that one. <laughs> this that one. one. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah sorry, they, Nathaniel. I didn't realize you were clicking. Nine, they built um. They they made like multiple movies of him and everything. What's that weird sketch of him? Like that really? We're next to the grave. This one. <laughs> <laughs> That's quite funny, isn't oh, it? Oh, what? That's a Ooh. self-portrait. Oh, that's actually terrifying. That's a self-portrait he did? Yeah. He's, he, he had a, like a freaking long list of mental health problems, I think. Like, serious mental health problems. Yeah, this guy was a creepy Freaky. man. But I just thought that was a real cool story of how he like just appeared out of no one. No one knew who he was. <clears throat> he clearly, like, he doesn't really look like a child there, I wouldn't say. Like, no. he kind of does, but he looks like he's, like, old enough. His face looks like that of a man, if you uh, ask yeah, me. Yeah, old enough that someone he's would know He's got solid him. calf muscles. Yes. Yeah, yeah which, yeah, again, yeah. not like that of somebody that spent their entire life in a cell. Mm-hmm. Because, let's face it, your no calf... rickets there. Yeah, you build, like, calf muscles, traditionally, like, in the outside world, from things like climbing up mountains. Mm. I mean, long before the days of bodybuilders doing calf raises mm. and things like that. Do you know what I mean? You'd have them from, like, doing lots of things like climbing up mountains and hills and... You know, Ugh. going on bicycles lots, like people that use go on use bikes a lot. Mm. Not of people that spend their whole life in a cell. You'd have little chicken legs, man, wouldn't you? Yeah. Mm. Oh, is that a real photo? I don't think so. No, that's a movie from 1965. Uh. But quite creepy that he just appeared with, like, two letters in his hand as well. Mm. Like, he really played mm. up to this whole thing, didn't he? I think in those days, though, I think that it would have been so much easier to be, like, come across as real mysterious. Because mm. you've got to bear in mind, like, say, say, like, even when my grandmother was little, right? She grew up in a village called Stagursi, which is about um, eight miles away from the nearest town. It's a little village, mm. eight miles away from the nearest town, maybe about eight and a half. And she said that, um, obviously, this is like, people didn't really have cars back in those days. There was apparently, like, the doctor in the village had a car, and that was it. Mm. So, like, the whole village, there was one car. Mm. Um, and she said, once a week, you could go into town, but that was because there would, like, a horse and cart would go in. So, you could, like, jump in the back of the cart as long as there was room for you. Mm-hmm. So, like, going just eight miles to the nearest town was, like, a massive trip. And even, like, the little villages around, like, there's this village called, like, Nether Stowey, which is about two miles away from Stagursi. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, the most that you would really go is, like, maybe you'd go on your bike to, like, Nether Stowey. But mm. even they were almost, like, considered, like, you know, they were almost considered, like, outsiders. Yeah. Just, just the little village two miles down the road. Mm. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So I think, like, you could probably even just go, like, 20 miles and in no those days. And you, you could are. almost, like, mm-hmm. start off a new life and give yourself yeah. a new name. And people would just accept it. Mm. Yeah, you'd be like, mm. to, the, to those people, they'd be like, "This person's a mystery." Mm. Do you know what I mean? If you'd like before cars, if you just you, and just think of any village in your mind that's like roughly twenty miles away, and you can just imagine, like, if you, like, if you drove there today, you wouldn't really know who anyone is. So imagine then like walking or getting a horse, cart, or just you know doing a mixture of like hiking and hitchhiking there. And then, yeah, but nobody would know who you are. Mm. You could say you're anyone. You could come mm. up with some alias, come up with some weird background. Do you know what I mean? If you were that way inclined, mm. if you were. A fan of a fanciful tale. Yeah, it reminds and me of cowboy times, like going from mm. town to ta- town and well, like yeah, fake sheriffs and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and obviously a lot of the the uh, like Wild West figures, they did have like a like a, a long list of like aliases. Yeah, mm. like do you know what I mean, yeah. they all had like you know like all of the famous cowboys, whether it's like Butch Cassidy, Sundance Kid, you know, um, Wild Bill Hickok, all of them. They weren't they weren't their real names. Mm. Yeah, you know they mm. they had their real names were things like. James Longabar mm-hmm. and stuff like that. That was like the Sundance mm-hmm. Kid and things like that. So yeah, yeah. Interessante. I know that actually some of the talking about that. Some of the really, really like notorious uh, Wild West like gunslingers and that. If they had like massive bounties in Texas and stuff, they would literally just like travel by night to, to counties like California, and mm-hmm. it was far away enough. They would just go to California, and give themselves a new name get like a job or something mm. get some new job and like make up a past and then like because nobody, nobody, kept, nobody in California would yeah, know who they were yeah, yeah, yeah. so mm. they would just get away with it yeah they grow like if they didn't have a moustache uh, before and they were like wanted posters they just like grow a fat moustache or a beard and like change their hairstyle mm. that's it 
Yeah. That's crazy. Times were different back then, yeah, man. man. It's like we're such a small world nowadays, aren't mm. we? Do you know what mm. I mean? You could see like a an actual picture of like a murderer in like Shanghai. And if that was caught on like CCTV in like Manchester, England, then that's it. Yeah, I mean? yeah. But like that's, I mean, then that's it would be impossible, obviously, to have that sort of level of uh, detail back in those mm. days. You know, be able to catch people like that. Mm. Interesante. Like Interesante. Yeah, but yeah, that's. I mean, regardless of his story, uh, certainly a massive mystery. Mm. So many unanswered questions. Yeah, like where did he actually come from? Who were his parents? Was that even his real name? Yeah. Um, what you know. was his motive? Yeah, and obviously we don't know for sure if he actually was did commit suicide accidentally. Mm. Mm. That's just the most likely scenario, I think, yeah. from like the uh, fr- from like the story that you told. Because he does sound very much like, like a pathological the, liar. I think the, um, like he was saying, there's a, there's a lot of opposing opinions to this. Mm. So the the one that I sort of researched off, I think that was more his opinion that he, this guy was like a liar. But I'm sure you could find people that were out there that would give you or, or sell you this story in the opinion that he was not a liar at all and that he mm. was like some heir to a royal throne. Yeah. Mm. But yeah. Yeah, maybe. I mean, you never know, do you? You, know, you never know with Mystery never Mondays, know. and that's the point. That's the whole point of Mystery Mondays, isn't it? You never, know. you never know. I think the thing is, as well, like, there's there's what you think in your mind is the most obvious case, and usually the most obvious, like, solution or case is, is, is the right one, but not always, mm. you know? So maybe we're, like, way off. That's mm. what makes it an interesting mystery, isn't it? Mm. As, as uh, Drew so astutely said, it's Mystery Mondays for a reason. Mm-hmm. Anything else you want to add, lads? Um, look to the skies, follow your heart. <laughs> follow the rainbow, what will you see? A little leprechaun dancing round the gold pot with me. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs>